Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us once again. I've uh, got two guests in studio with me right now. Uh, Mr. Richard Brand, the Chief Financial Officer of the Laboratory for Advanced Medicine, or LAM, and Dr. Rick Van Etten. He's Chief Medical Officer for LAM, and they're joining us here on the program to talk about IV gene. It's a highly accurate uh, blood test, and we're going to talk about this blood test that's um, going to be instrumental, I'm sure, in detecting early stage cancer. Welcome to the program, both uh, Richard Brand and Dr. Van Etten. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, uh, Richard, as Chief Financial Officer of LAM, give us a brief background. Oh, um, well, uh, prior to joining LAM, I was um, CFO for um, another biotech company. And um, over the course of a two-year span, uh, we ended up uh, going public and becoming uh, the best-performing biotech IPO for much of 2017 um, with liberalizations in China announced late in October of 17, the company's pretty much returned there, and, and that opened me up for an opportunity to join LAM. Um, most of my business in the past was helping as a CFO and, and uh, as an investment manager uh, for other people, uh, and then before that, in capital markets and investment banking. And Dr. Van Etten, what is your uh, area of expertise? Well, I'm a hematologist, oncologist. I specialize in blood cancer, and um, I'm currently the director of the NCI Designated Cancer Center at the University of California, Irvine. What is the Laboratory for Advanced Medicine? I mean, it, it sounds like it's a very broad, uh, a broad range of uh, activities that your company can be be involved in. What is LAM? Yeah, well, actually, we the the name describes our vision, but uh, to be successful at this stage of our company, we need to be focused. And our focus is uh, bringing to um, help people a number of tests to uh, that detect cancer with high accuracy and do so uh, from a blood sample. Um, so we are uh, launching a um, liver cancer detection test. And also in the lab in the last half of last year, we uh, discovered markers for um, other types of specific cancers that we can detect with high accuracy. So we're talking what is commonly referred to as early stage, or are we talking about even earlier than that? Yes, the, the products that Lab is developing uh, are primarily in the space for early cancer detection using blood tests. So it's uh, commonly referred to as, for instance, as a liquid biopsy. What makes a liquid biopsy uh, better at early detection? Uh, I know it's kind of maybe an obvious question, but explain it to our listeners why it's so revolutionary. I think the analogy is that we're not, say, photography-based like others, other approaches, ultrasound or mammography for breast cancer. And as a result, they, they do better when the tumor is larger in stage three. But what we, what we found and, and the science uh, supports is that um, the type of marker we're detecting in the blood uh, is at elevated levels in our bodies, even at the beginning of a tumor. And that allows us to have high accuracy, even at stage one uh, cancer detection. So obviously detecting it much earlier greatly reduces the impact of, of the treatment, at, you know, as opposed to catching it, you know, in, in second or third stage, obviously. Or does that... Uh, make a big difference? I mean, getting rid of it, even though it's detected that early, is it the same The same process, the same procedure? Yes. The, the majority of cancers um, are cured surgically by surgical excision. And there's a very strong correlation with the ability to cure a cancer based upon the stage. So the earlier you catch it, the uh, more likely it is to be cured by surgery alone. Now we're talking cured, not simply going into remission so that the same cancer can recur in the same place or someplace else, right? Well, that's correct. Let's, let's take early stage breast cancer. So if a woman today would have mammography, which is a test that has suffers from some problems with sensitivity, which is the ability to detect these early cancers, particularly in dense or fibrous breasts. If you detect the lesion, you'll have a biopsy, then you'll excise the mass. And the idea is that that will be curative. Um, now, some women will need additional therapy, um, which is called adjuvant chemotherapy, and that's to prevent the development of metastases. Uh, by eliminating small foci of cancer that is already spread at the time of diagnosis. But again, the earlier the stage, the more likely it is that we can cure it by surgery 
and you can catch it before it is spread. Now, I believe it was Richard who pointed out that you need to be focused as an enterprise. IV gene, is this one of these uh, tests that diagnoses liver, breast, colon, lung, all of the cancers, or is it focused on a couple of specific types? We have a, a test um, commercially available that I would uh, call like a, a version 1.0, and it's a panel in the sense that it um, it detects that a patient has cancer and does so with high degrees of accuracy, but it's not um, geared yet to detect what the tissue of origin is. So it would tell the general practitioner that the patient has a cancer. It might be liver, it might be lung, it might be uh, breast cancer. Um, but it's just a good warning, early warning signal for the doctor and the patient that uh, more tests have to be run on that patient because that, that, that patient does have cancer. Uh, and, and that is finding um, commercial success already with um, at-risk patient populations such as firefighters. We know after 9-11 that firefighters have uh, an increased risk of lung cancer uh, and are getting lung cancer at earlier stages. So we have uh, municipalities around the country who are buying our, ser our service to, um, to test their um, employees, the firefighters. And we're also finding other uh, specialist medical practices who are um, uh, finding this is a, a beneficial test. But as we progress with our success in the lab, um, our greater focus will be on these cancer-specific tests that we have, the first one being liver. Um, and then eventually what we want to do is have a number of those, eight or 10 or 12, that we can bundle up and then have a much more robust panel test in the future, which would tell the practitioner that the patient has cancer and also the tissue of origin of that cancer. Describe a conversation with a with a patient, you know, between a patient and a practitioner where the decision is made to employ IV gene. What are some of the symptoms, uh, some of the outcomes, some of the things before you decide that uh, this blood test is the way to go? Well, it would depend um, on exactly what the test was and what type of cancer it is. And um, the, the pan cancer test, as, um, as uh, Richard mentioned, is currently a laboratory developed test that's available and can be ordered. Um, and its principal um, market right now has been in screening first responders. But perhaps we could focus on our, our first product um, that, um, will, um, that is undergoing clinical trials right now, which is for early detection of liver. So in that case, there's a population that's well-defined who is at high risk for liver cancer, and those are people that have cirrhosis, uh, damage to the liver through several different um, causes, including alcohol, drugs, uh, viruses, um, some hereditary conditions, um, conditions like that. So these folks are at higher risk for liver cancer than the general population. Um, they will go on to develop liver cancer at a frequency between 1% and 15% per year, and currently, they're screened by ultrasound. And um, the IVG and liver test is a very sensitive and specific test that is designed to detect those cancers without needing an ultrasound. Um, and um, it is intended to be used every year, just like ultrasound screening. So that's the clinical trial that is uh, underway right now, is to um, compare that to ultrasound. Well, where can our listeners go online and get some more information about IV gene and about LAM in general? Our website is uh, www.lamonco.com, lamoncogroup.com. Lamoncogroup.com, great. And um, yes. you'll find mm -hmm. all the information that we, that we need about uh, IV gene and any of the other products or, or uh, developments that you're involved in as well, yeah? Yeah, and we have a, a product-specific uh, website to ivgenelabs.com. All right. Well, I thank you both for joining us on the program this morning. It's been a pleasure, and I'm hoping to uh, hear more about LAM in the future. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. You're quite welcome. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Richard Brand, Chief Financial Officer of LAM, and Dr. Richard Van Etten, Chief Medical Officer for the Laboratory for Advanced Medicine. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Be sure and visit our affiliates page when you visit our platform. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. 
One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.